Death Rates, 4th April 2020, Disturbing Anomalies. Please also watch the critical Government Killer video. We have been asked several times whether we maintained our earlier estimates for e.g. UK deaths, especially since they had now risen above our original prediction of 3,451 to 3,605 on the 4th April and 4,313 on the 5th April. Let us nail this confusion promptly before it gets out of hand. Let us publish an estimate saying that the Atlantic Traveller departing Southampton today, 6 April at noon, and travelling at 15 knots, 17.25 miles an hour, will cover the 3,425 miles to New York in 8.25 days and arrive in New York at 6 p.m. on the 14th of April, 8.25 days time. It reaches the halfway point in 2.5 days, so it will likely be there in 5 days, not 8.25 days. Was our estimate wrong? Is that an excuse to disregard our data? No, it's a reason to look at the behaviour of the ship. It turns out that the captain, as soon as he was out of sight of land, increased speed to 25 knots, 28.5 miles an hour. It was not that our estimate based on his then current speed was wrong, but that his speed subsequently changed. How could we have known that? We could have tracked the ship by following in a helicopter or vessel and radioed back reports of the ship's changed speed. Does tracking the ship sound familiar? Specifically, we have considered several scenarios. Hubei cases at Hubei death rates. Hubei cases at UK death rates, Italy current cases at UK death rates, Italy projected cases at UK death rates. Tracking the curves allows us to see whether we are indeed headed for Hubei or Italy levels, and we also can project the curve for a UK level. This is no different than miles per gallon for your car, based on urban and overall figures. You do not expect to get precisely the urban figure or the overall figure, but they do give you a sense of the miles per gallon you might reasonably expect based on those figures and use. As such, please understand that we are not predicting outcomes, but providing scenarios and then tracking the curves to evaluate which scenario we seem likely to be headed for. Now we come to death rates. We were asked if we had modified our estimate for UK deaths, with the deaths in the UK now standing at 4313. In general, we do not focus on death statistics. They will follow the far more reliable cases curves with far higher numbers and less variation between different countries. We duly presented our estimate based on projected cases, 202,000 per 100 million population or 133,300 cases using the 6% death rate, a bit higher than Hubei, that we'd been used to, we projected a final figure of 8,000 deaths. Then we thought we'd better just check and see what the current death rate was. 10.3%? That prompted what I can only describe as an emergency analysis of what was going on. With death rates in this first world nation, Italy's 10% figure, now 12.3%, was considered dramatically high and due to the elderly living at home and being more vulnerable. Ours live in care homes and are nominally isolated, yet we have an OAP death rate. What is going on? I will leave it to the reader to explore news reports, or rather not news reports, but individual reports, of such phenomena as crowded hospitals on camera empty the day after, instructions to staff to describe any death within 60 days as COVID-19 if they previously tested positive, and of course the legitimate possibility that a relatively large proportion of our cases are dying. My concern is to provide a perspective based on the data and will do that in a moment. Strangely, however, while the surprising figure disturbs me for the change it represents, it does not disturb me in terms of evaluating the overall nature and magnitude of the COVID-19 phenomenon. 
the government has created a trap of its own making. Even at 10.3% 5th of April data, that provides a projected figure of 13,731 deaths, or about 9 days UK normal mortality. We don't shut down society for 550,000 deaths, but we're shutting it down for 13,700. Also, bear in mind that our 202,000 cases per 100 million is a pre-lockdown projection, which we are deliberately leaving in place. For lockdown to be justified, it cannot reduce the deaths by more than 13,700 realistically, and that's if every anticipated death was presented. If it saves 50%, then that's around 6,800 deaths and we shut down society and submitted to lockdown with all the associated damage for 6,800 deaths or about four days normal mortality. The government have painted themselves into a corner. They simply can't save enough lives to make the destruction of our liberty and way of life justifiable. If they try to fudge the cases and boost them, well, that would make no sense since we're locked down and the curve would twitch up entirely unreasonably. If they try to increase the death statistics, we overtake Italy and have figures the worst in the world and look like a nation of solely 80 plus people dying. They are stuck and the final figures for cases is headed precisely for the no lockdown projection at the moment and even if it flattens, it's too late to make a significant difference to the final deaths. Since the curve was already mature, it remains a matter of record what we were headed for pre-lockdown. The government left it too late to get away with implementing a spurious measure. We should state, therefore, that we have no interest in UK death rate statistics simply because we have no confidence in their accuracy and we already know that this has been a deliberately manipulated situation from the moment the PM opened his mouth and the UK Chief Medical Officer announced that 530,000 of us were at risk of dying if no measures were taken. Well, even at today's death rates with a pre-lockdown curve riding to completion, that figure is closer to 13,700. We submitted to lockdown for 530,000 deaths. Would we have done so for 13,700? I'd sincerely hope not. Here, though, is the current death rates table for 20 leading countries. I'll put it full screen for a moment so you can capture it. The table on the left is unsorted. If you can spot an error, let us know. It is the source for these calculations and the charts to follow. Data, as always, is taken from the World Health Organization Daily Situation Reports, on the right, the 20 countries outside China are ranked by death rate. I'm tempted to title this video, UK Government Saving Lives Not a Priority, because the absurd range of death rates from the same virus among supposedly similar nations, and aren't we the leading nations, is absurd. The PM ought to be on the phone all day with Thailand, Singapore, Norway, Germany and Australia to find out their secret. I don't watch the news, so for all I know he has been, but I suspect I'd have seen something. Yet I don't recall anyone posting anything about the wide variance in death rates. Indeed, the mean average is 4.4% and the standard deviation, reasonable chance of being different, is 3.9%, meaning it's entirely reasonable for the death rate to be anything from 0.5% to 8.3% from the same virus. Does that seem absurd to anyone? Other than the stats boosting reports I've received, the one rational and reasonable comment someone made was that Germany tests every case, or tests a far higher percentage of its population. That's fine, but then why isn't Germany showing a massive contagion far exceeding Italy and the UK? So no, that really doesn't cut it. The variance among those rates means I don't trust them at all. The reported cases that we track seems reasonable. Broadly, a case is a case. No one is racing past Hubei by a factor 
of 10, 20, 50 or 100 times as we would if China lied and you're an idiot if you don't recognize true deaths were 50 to 100 times worse, as one troll put it. The joy of trolls is they're so easy to shoot down, perhaps why we see so few these days. And of course the king troll was the UK government. You're a fool if you believe the Hubei figures. It'll be 150 times worse with 530,000 deaths. You know, I kind of wish Boris would come on to Peerless Reeds or the chief medical officer. Taking down the king troll and his troll general would be a priceless moment. So no, we generally have no interest in the death figures for tracking the virus. For an estimate based on each country's death rates, fine, we can do that. It's easy enough and we've done that already. But for seeing where the contagion is going, we'll stick to the charts that should by now be familiar. With that understood, and solely for your curiosity, let's take a walk through the 20 countries we picked and painstakingly typed in data for. No, we won't be extending this, and no, we won't be adding countries. We may do a death projection, but that only needs one day's data, not all data points. Sorry. Here's a charming piece by Andrew Pillock expressing the futility of life and lies in the modern era. It's yours for a mere $250,000. Do I hear $250,000? $270,000 to the faceless man in the grey suit. It's also the only time you'll see a country comparison not adjusted by population. I'll put it full screen in case you want a snapshot. Here's the population adjusted to 100 million charts and I included the previous because I actually scaled up the charts, exaggerated the difference, by getting the formula upside down. Only having seen the unadjusted chart saved me, so if I ever do make such an error, my apologies. Naturally, if you fact check me, as a few have, it'll be caught and quickly corrected. Beyond observing that as ever, it's a pack heading in broadly the same direction and in line with Hubei, the lying Chinese horizontal line. That meme is so discredited, I ache every time I hear it. Here then is Italy with its death curve showing the same curl over, familiar from the cases curve. Germany shows some curl over, but Norway, Sweden and the UK are all linear, even accelerating. Interestingly, with deaths lagging as cases drop, but deaths continue, the death rate will increase, though it's, it's actually a good sign. I'm not saying that's what's happening here. Instead, between the reports of data stuffing, the lag for deaths and the smaller numbers, I do not regard it as a legitimate indicator. We'll be sticking to cases. Singapore, Australia, Iran and Pakistan. Iran was clearly badly hit, but look at it approaching Hubei asymptotically, gently, while Oz, Singapore and Pakistan are way below Hubei. In fact, my overriding reaction on entering all the necessary data was that the figures are pathetic. When you look at these figures and consider that the whole world has suffered unprecedented chaos, loss of liberty, death in many cases and countries, just for breaking curfew, and all on the premise that this virus was an existential threat, traffic deaths would give these figures a good run for their money, and flu. Cancer, totally devastating by comparison. And please don't give me lockdown saved us. It hasn't. It has been a fraud in the West, but may have saved non-Hubei provinces. Spain purple is vying for Europe's worst hit and going to get it. Netherlands, France and Switzerland seem to have a viro agreement to keep deaths in line. Quite bizarre. Korea, South Korea, very sensibly kept its mouth shut and got on with not dying from the virus. Turkey and Poland are escalating, deaths, not cases, bear in mind, and Thailand is linear, exponential on a log scale. Not satisfied with disappointing non-curling cases, the US seems to be escalating, accelerating in deaths, with Canada reluctantly following suit. 
for the most vocal nation on the planet, maybe less talk, less action, and take it like a leading nation? So far, the US has achieved nothing but pain and delay. Canada is reluctantly trailing, and Brazil even more reluctantly. Let go, fellas, seriously. The insanity is doing you nothing but harm, fueled by the lies from the UK government. If the Chinese sue for the US threatening to invade based on UK lies, does that mean we pay taxes to pay for our politicians' sins? But politicians, they're way too low. Think higher. Not PM either. Higher. The capacity to instruct the UK Prime Minister to lie and terrify 66 million people into lockdown and to order a manufactured report that's not Boris. There's only one level of people with that kind of power. And no, I won't name them. It's not rocket science. Death rates are absurd measures for the contagion because they are far too much at variance with each other for meaningful comparison. We'll stick to the case charts, but maybe ask why our rates are so absurdly high in the UK. And please, USA, zip it and get on with it. We're still in your last war. We've no need for any more thank you. Thank you for listening or watching. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever, a bunch of stuff. Take care. Feel free to get in touch. Andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.